G'day folks, Rob here, and today I'm harvesting some ginger from these pouches behind me here. Thought I'd bring you along and give you a bit of a look at how we selected the rhizome, planted it out, maintained it through the season, and ultimately, at the end of the video, you'd see a nice little tidy harvest if all goes to plan. Uh, before we get cracking though, I just wanted to really thank those folks who are supporting the channel through the YouTube membership program and also our Farm Your Own Yard supporters website. Thank you very much, folks. But enough spruiking of my bits and pieces. Uh, we'll jump back in time to the end of summer when these guys were looking a lot more chipper and give you a bit of a lowdown on how we got these guys started. There we go, folks. There's a little hedge of ginger we have on the deck here. Uh, now, those three there are the original pouches we started off with. We'll look at them being planted out in a tick. Uh, these two pouches on the end here, uh, they were started off using store-bought rhizome that um, basically started to shoot. We'd had to buy it because we ran out from um, last season's harvest um, I took pity on them a bit of an addict and I popped them in some pouches just to boost up the amount that we'll get this season these three pouches here were started with some ginger rhizome that came from a wicking bed down the back that was harvested after the plants had completely died back last winter uh, we're lucky enough that we can just leave the ginger in the ground here and it will overwinter fine we only got a small modest harvest of around about 1.9 kilograms from memory mainly because we've been harvesting rhizome from that bed all year around. Now from that harvest I saved six sections of ginger that I wanted to plant out into three 10 gallon or roughly 39 litre pouches. Now you don't need to save your own ginger obviously not everyone can do that but if you do go and buy store-bought ginger try and find a section that is roughly around about 50 grams I think that's about one and a half to one and three quarter ounces in weight uh, mainly because that amount of bulk in the ginger itself will give it loads of energy so it'll get off to a cracking start some people also recommend you look for these little growth points and sprout points i don't think that's necessary when you're growing ginger mainly because it will shoot when the time is ready namely when the soil temperature gets over around about 24 degrees celsius um, in fact you know it's one of those things that will grow in pretty much well most warmer zones warm temperates up to um you know tropical zones around the world uh, here in australia pretty much all any mainland state and even in the colder areas you can grow up but will need some TLC uh, you folks over in the States for example it will grow down to zone 7 but again it will need some TLC in some of those colder regions now we'll get on to the planting and as I mentioned before I did save six pieces that ranged in weight from 50 to around about 100 grams in size the soil mix for the pouches was a pretty basic one. I looked for a premium potting mix. I've got my favorite one here. And to that, I added a slow release organic fertilizer. Um, another good thing you could add is compost. Uh, anything that breaks down slowly to feed up the soil. Also recently, I've been adding in some rock dust that's been activated with some microbes. So a good handful of that went into each pouch as well. When it came to planting them out, I popped the rhizomes down roughly around about 40 to 50 mils, which is an inch and a half to two inches in depth, and then just covered them over. Now it's a good idea because ginger can get rather large to try and plant them towards the center of the pouch. Uh, as you'll see in a minute here, a lot of the rhizome is actually pushing out on the side of these pouches. So probably would pay to give them a fair bit of room. So as soon as they were planted out, they were moved here to the veranda into a position that only got the morning sun through summer, not the harsh afternoon sun, and given a good water. When it comes to watering them once you've planted them, I don't like to overdo it. I just give them a little bit of a drink, more so the soil than the rhizomes themselves, because they've got enough moisture and energy in there to take off. As soon as I start to see the green sprouts, that's when I uh, start to water the pouch more regularly. And of course, growing ginger in containers, like any plant means that you need to give them a little bit of extra TLC uh, just make sure that the soil is nice and moist and fed well so the plants can thrive so we'll jump back to summer and we'll check out how I maintain these guys these guys here were placed on the north side of our veranda it's because our winter sun comes from the north just over that way a bit of an angle and during the um, late stages of summer through autumn and into the start of winter while they're still growing they're going to get a nice amount of sunlight across there for you folks in the northern hemisphere 
atmosphere, you'd want to position yours in a southerly facing aspect because that's the angle your winter sun will be coming from and it'll keep the plants toasty warm. As for maintenance, well watering, I've got a couple of cans permanently on the deck up here and I water these guys pretty much well every day. During the hottest parts of summer though, I was filling the trays down the bottom just to make sure that they had ample water at all times. So when it comes to feeding these guys, generally if it was in a larger bed, what I would do is move back the mulch and add in a couple of handfuls of compost or maybe some slow release fertilizer and replace the mulch. Um, but because these guys are in containers up here on the deck, I didn't want to have to be um, carting compost upstairs. I've been giving them a liquid feed. The liquid nutrients I've been using is an A and B hydroponic solution that you can also use in the soil as well. So we're only using the bloom because we've got hydroponics on the go as well. Uh, for you folks who don't, something like this fish emulsion, this is the Aussie uh, Charlie carp made from a feral pest species. Uh, this stuff actually packs quite a punch and is a great all-round, all-purpose organic vegetable feed. So yeah, something like this would do just as well. Just follow the instructions on the back of the packet and that should see you through to get a uh, decent little harvest like we're going to have today. Rain interrupted a play the other day when I wanted to harvest these guys and started filming. Uh, it's a good thing that it did because I just wanted to show you how fast these things tend to um, die off. Once the weather gets a little bit cool, we have all these extra little branches that are coming off by themselves uh, just because the um, ginger is starting to die back because of the um, temperature mainly. I've also stopped watering um, these two center pouches, the ones I'll be harvesting today. I'll just pop them down with the rest of the bits and pieces. So here we go with pouch number one. Uh, this one here has also got a seaside daisy growing in it. Uh, this is something that went to seed on the deck on our little uh, veggie table. And um, yeah, we've had a couple of plants pop up in all the ginger pouches. So we'll just try and pull these guys out. And we've got more of these growing out the back, so I'm not too worried about losing these guys. And we'll have a bit of a gander <laughs> of what's in here ginger-wise. Oh, by the way, these guys went in in October last year. So that makes them around about nine months in the soil. So I'll just try and roll these around a bit. I don't want to get too much soil on the deck itself because the aquaponics system is directly below us. Normally I'd just be breaking the ginger out, but I want to give you a bit of an idea of the size of the rhizome. So I'm trying to take them out in um, the two separate pieces that were planted out to give you some idea. This little section here looks like it may have been one of the mothers originally. So after a bit of wriggling, I was able to get the um, soil out of the pouch. Now, just try and break it away without breaking up these rhizomes. I think it might help if I use my handy dandy little trowel to break some of this soil away. So the reason I'm trying to break the soil off these plants so we can weigh them individually is just to give you some idea of the yield you can expect. If you um, have a crack at growing these yourself in a container. So there we go, that made it a lot easier. Try and untangle these two bits. This bit's actually growing through this bit over here. Really is like a bit of a monkey puzzle. So that's one section and this is the other. Not bad for starting out as um, this little bit of ginger just in there onto the next pouch. So I won't make you sit through the next one folks, but I will let you know that I think next time I will try and grow them in wicking containers, something with a uh, diameter of more than 60 centimeters or two foot, because yeah, these guys are really stretching the limit of the pouches here. And just something interesting on the base here. We've got these little nodules. These little nodules, um, they don't really taste like ginger. I have tried them in the past. I think they're more a um, survival tactic of the plant when things are good. It pops a little bit of energy in these little nodules on the roots. Um, so it's there when needed if um, times get tough. So this may interest uh, a few of you folks as well. Um, just to show you how deep it grows, it's pretty much around about half a foot or 15 centimeters from the top surface of the soil there to these deep sections of the rhizome. Um, so I have seen people grow them in fairly shallow tubs, but I, I like to have them in the deeper um, pouches and containers if I can, because it means more soil, more compost and more nutrients for the plant to have access to, because as you can see, the roots have no problems going right down to the bottom of the pouch. Uh, so now all the ginger's out, I'll nip on down the back chop off the larger roots, give them a bit of a wash, then we'll pop up and uh, have a bit of a weigh in. So just before we get in to the final look at the ginger, I thought I'd give you a bit of a gander at these guys. This pouch here in particular will be one that's kept aside 
out until it's time to plant out again in a month or two's time mainly because the rhizome in here just looks a lot larger and um, healthier than the rest plus the plant is still looking fairly happy and I think that's because it's in this sheltered position uh, just next to the plant table up there so yeah there's definitely a nice load of ginger in there these other two pouches of um, ginger that went in around December using store-bought we're just going to leave these be I have a feeling this plant on this side has already died off so we'll just leave it go dormant in the pouch this pouch in particular i'm thinking i'll just let it go and leave it as um, rootstock whereas this one over here we've already harvested a number of bits of ginger from i uh, took out a small little piece for some um, green chili sauce we made up and um yeah there's a couple of nice sections like this one there that's pushing out the side of the pouch and if we want fresh ginger for anything um yeah we can come and harvest this uh, now we'll have a bit of a gander at the harvest so there we go folks that's what the ginger looks like all cleaned up i've still got it separated into the four plants and we'll just set up the um, scales here and give you a bit of a look at the tally so I'll just zero off these scales here and there we go and we'll start off with the ginger from the first pouch now this is the one where i thought i found a um, half decomposed mother um, so i don't think i can um, really allow for any mother rhizome in this lot here but there we go not a bad little yield 939 grams now on to plant number two which looks a tad bigger and also has the mother rhizome still attached that's the mother there and it's attached to this section here that has grown out to here and then all around it. it's actually um giving its mum a bit of a hug there which is very sweet so we'll pop that lot on there there we go we have 1.18 kilograms and i'd say that um mother is round about 90 grams so yeah we'll call it 1.1.09 kilograms uh, now that is a rather large chunk of um ginger that i have had larger previously i think our largest uh was round about 1.4 kilograms a number of years back now over to the second root pouch after i put all this stuff away now on the second root pouch um, we have this section here and this section here and that brings us up to 1.04 kilograms and I have a feeling that this section here is the mother so we'll take that off and that gives us 900 grams um, for this little harvest here which is pretty good now these mothers by the way i generally don't replant these guys out what i'll do is i'll process these and turn them into um, other products we'll use in the kitchen mainly because these younger rhizomes i think have more vigor when you plant them out but i'll give you a bit of a look at what we do with some of these in a tick now on to um plant number four and we're still at zero there still at zero plant number four is this chunk here which gives us 930 grams and I'm fairly sure that this is the mother for this one there. Again, I mean, it looks totally viable. Um, if we pop this in the ground, it probably would take off again. But yeah, I'd just rather use something with a little bit more vigor. Pop it on anyway, give you a bit of an idea. Just over a kilogram. So all in all, I'm pretty chuffed. So there you go, folks. Got to be pretty chuffed with that amount of ginger. Uh, roughly around about 3.8 kilograms all up, which is cheat sheet. Um, 8.4 pounds so uh, I showed a little bit of b-roll before in certain stupid markets here in Australia ginger is still selling for $50 a kilogram so just in this basket here not including the mothers we're looking at $193 worth of ginger so um, yeah that that has got to be a bit of a bonus in anyone's book especially considering how much we use I use it in pretty much all any stew um, casserole all our stir fries have it in there we also put it in drinks um, Thai curries Indian curries you name it we pretty much will try and sneak a little bit of ginger in uh, not only that I really would like to start making up some ginger beer and luckily enough I found some in the pantry that I thought was some dehydrated oyster mushrooms that I did last year so this is ginger left from two seasons ago that um, yeah we packed away when we moved out of the house and I've only just realized that it's ginger and not dried mushrooms so I can make up some ginger beer with this stuff here so that brings me to what we're going to do with the majority of this ginger here including the mothers uh, most of it will be run through the food processor and we'll turn it into a ginger paste and from there we'll just freeze it in thin slabs in the freezer so we can just break bits off and um, throw it in meals or drinks as we need it 
a little bit may end up being left in the fridge fresh. We'll try to use it up as, as fast as possible. But like I said, we do have the other pouches we can nip out and break off small amounts whenever we want to add it fresh into cooking later on. I've actually got a video that shows seven different ways that we've um, saved ginger, either for use in the kitchen or for growing in the next season. So you can check out that in a little link, little pop-up at the end here. And there will also be a little link down in the description below. So I would like to thank you all for coming along and checking out yet another ginger growing and harvest video here on our channel. Uh, if you can't tell, it is one of my favorite plants to grow and I dare say I will post some more down the line as well. I will pretty much all leave it there though. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own ginger plots are booming and I will catch you next video. Cheers folks, have a top one.